A sinner cannot pretend that he is unable to repent from sins because he who is able to commit the sins is undoubtedly able to repent from those sins as well. Yes, if we humans are able to eat, drink, walk, talk, get married, uh, work, play sports, associate with others, we'll be able to curb our appetites and activities in order to avoid a disease as recommended by the doctor. Then we should be able to avoid sins and falling into the abyss to the abyss of corruption and disobedience. Tonight's episode is an attempt to discuss the significance of repentance, exploring into the essence of true, sincere repentance, and how it can be achieved in light of the Holy Quran. Respected viewers, brothers and sisters in Islam, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to the 11th episode of Life from Karbala Ramadan series with me, your host Ahmed Ali. Uh, tonight's episode is very sensitive. Uh, this is why my esteemed guest has joined me once again in tonight's episode, Sayyid Hussein Al Qazwini. Assalamu alaikum, Sayyidna. Allah khalikum, inshaAllah. Allah salamkum. Uh, Sayyidna, repentance, uh, as I mentioned, is a very sensitive topic because some, uh, you know, get offended when you talk about this topic because if they, they say that if we sin, we can't repent because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is, um, is harsh in this manner because He says if someone sins or offenses Allah, we talked about oppressing Allah and oppressing oneself. Uh, it's very hard. Uh, some people view it hard for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive them for a specific act. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in chapter 20 verse 82, And most surely I am most forgiving to him who repents and believes and does good, then continues to follow in the right direction. What is the meaning of tawbah and what is its significance? أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين وصلى الله على سيدنا محمد وآله الطيبين الطاهرين اللهم صل على محمد the word توبه من تاب توبوا التوابين توبه and its forms has been mentioned many times in the Quran yes many times I wasn't able to count how many exact times mm -hmm. that repentance and the, its forms yes. have been mentioned in the Qur'an. Mm -hmm. But I do know that the Qur'an has mentioned it enough to show how important it is. Yes. How important Tawbah is. We always see the emphasis. There's a major emphasis on Tawbah. What is Tawbah? Mm -hmm. Tawbah as we know it is repentance. Mm -hmm. To repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. To seek forgiveness from Him after committing a sin. Mm -hmm. Simply, this is what Tawbah is. To seek forgiveness after committing a sin. Why is it important? Because none of us are sinless. None of us are infallible. Yes. Except the prophets and the imams and those who have reached very high stages. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, for the majority of us... Mm -hmm. We're sinful and we commit sins. Uh, those sins vary from size. Some are, are heinous sins, some are small sins. There are some people that are addicted to some, some sort of sins but would not perform other types while you have the opposite. But a sin is a sin at the mm -hmm. end of the day. Whether it's drinking or gambling or uh, adultery, or gossiping and backbiting. Yes. These are all sins. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. Allah knows that humans are not sinless. They are not infallible. Mm -hmm. They are prone to committing sins. Yes. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us desires. He's put in inside of us a nafs al amara bis su. Yes. The desi the, we, uh, we have a nafs that continuously orders us to sin. A, a nafs that tells us do whatever you want. Even if it means you have to break some of Allah's laws and orders. So at the same time Allah has put has opened the door. Allah says that you know you left the door of obedience but I've kept another door for you. You've disobeyed me and I know that at some point you will disobey me but it doesn't mean it's the end of the world. Mm -hmm. If you commit a sin against Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, it doesn't mean that's it. It's over. 
there's no there's no going back mm -hmm. but why embed this in you know in, in the nature of man if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is opening various doors I mean he couldn't he just create humans uh, sinless I want to have to open you know various doors doors of obedience or doors of repentance this is the test the test is here mm -hmm. that I've given you al nafs al amara basu yes but at the same time I've given you free will and I've given you I've given you a strong will yes and I've given you the ability to be determined mm -hmm. and not commit sins mm -hmm. but for those of you that were weak for those of you that could not control themselves mm -hmm. for those of you that have weak spots and weak points and you did commit sins it's not the end of the world, it's not the end of the world don't definitely. don't go and commit suicide yes don't go and abandon Islam altogether mm -hmm. and become irreligious no there's a door called uh, the door of Tawbah as Imam Zayn al-Abidin says in, mun in his Munajat I believe Munajat al-Ta'ibin mm -hmm. وَأَنْتَ الَّذِي فَتَحْتَ بَابًا لِعِبَادِكْ سَمَّيْتُهَا الْتَوْبَةِ Allah has opened the door, special door for those that they realize that they've committed a sin mm -hmm. they've committed sins, they've committed mistakes but they want to come back to Allah Yes. that's the beauty about Allah Azza wa Jal that he's always accepting. accepting that no matter what you do there's always room to come back wow. humans are not like that some humans you hurt them once that's, that's it. it they don't give you second chances yeah. there's no second chances but with Allah there's a second chance there's a third fourth fifth tenth hundredth Allah keeps on giving us chances and that chance is called Tawbah mm -hmm. Allah says as long as you come clean mm -hmm. Tawbah, we'll talk about the conditions of Tawbah. Mm -hmm. As long as you come clean, you don't, uh, you know, take Allah as a fool, na'udhu billah, na that you try to trick Him mm -hmm. by thinking that you've repented. Mm -hmm. Allah will not be tricked. Definitely. You come clean mm -hmm. and you actually repent and you say sorry and you seek forgiveness, mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will forgive. Mm -hmm. In the first episode, we talked about how Ramadan uh, is the type of month where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, gives, I mean, the whole year, people commit sins and you know various acts but uh, you mentioned the first night that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, placed Ramadan as the sacred month where to return back to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and refrain uh, oneself and reform sorry uh, oneself but some people believe that uh, after they have committed the sin uh, whether minor or, or major Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will never forgive them and they keep on committing sins thinking keeping that idea in mind. Uh, we believe that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is surely all accepting of, of repentance, Absolutely. Uh, no matter what the sin is. Absolutely. But we, we see, I mean, some sins, how can Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive them? I mean, rape, murder, uh, backbiting, those sins are major. I mean, one time Prophet, uh, someone, I don't know the authenticity of this uh, narration, but a lot of people, I heard it from many scholars, they said that someone came to the Prophet, he asked them, would a believer commit adultery? He said, maybe. But would a, and he asked another question. He said, would a believer lie? He said, no. So there's a chance of committing adultery, but not lying. So we see various types of sins. How can Allah you know, forgive the major sins, like murder, rape? We believe from what we understand from the Quran, from what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has taught us, that mm -hmm. Allah is all forgiving. Mm -hmm. He forgives all sins. Yes. As long as we come clean, as, we, as long as we seek forgiveness. If you don't seek forgiveness, even if you've committed the smallest sin, Allah won't forgive because you haven't come clean. You, have, you haven't sought forgiveness. And if, and if you've committed the biggest sin, but you come clean and you come and seek forgiveness from Allah, Allah will forgive. Mm -hmm. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran, إن الله لا يغفر أن يشرك به ويغفر ما دون ذلك لمن يشاء. There is one sin Allah will not forgive, and that is to take partners with Allah, knowingly, knowingly, mm -hmm. to be polytheistic, to say that God is not the only one; He has partners. Knowing that Allah Subhanahu is one, even though you, knowing that He has He is one, but you take partners with Him, shirk. Otherwise, shirk out of ignorance, it's that's another story. For, yeah. That's another story. But out of, you know, uh, uh, voluntary polytheism, that will not be forgiven. Otherwise, 
If it's not shirk, then he will forgive all sins as long as a person repents sincerely, even murder, even rape. All of these th sins, if someone comes clean, a gang member who spent his life stealing, killing, but now wants to come clean, wants to come back to Allah, this person can repent as well. However, there's some conditions. There's some conditions. We'll talk about that later. Inshallah. So just come and say, uh, I'm sorry, Allah. No. No. There, there's, there's rules and conditions. Mm -hmm. Allah says, أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ عَنْ عِبَادِهِ Do they not know that Allah, He Himself, this is emphasis, أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ That Allah Himself, this is emphasis in the verse. Otherwise, the verse could have said, أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ No. أَلَمْ يَعْلَمُوا أَنَّ اللَّهَ هُوَ يَقْبَلُ التَّوْبَةَ He accepts repentance from His servants. Do they, do they not know that? Mm -hmm. Let people know that Allah is all forgiving. And He's the one that accepts repentance from His servants. And He forgives the small sins. Sayyat or the minor sins. Allah is a tawab. Tawab as a person who consistently, constantly accepts forgiveness, mm -hmm. accepts repentance. Not once, not twice. Tawab times, means yes. repeatedly. Every time you go back to him, again mm -hmm. he'll accept your, your apology. Mm -hmm. And he'll accept your, uh, your repentance. Again and again. Ar-Rahim. So, my message to the youth, no matter what you've done, mm -hmm. keep it to yourself. First of all, don't share your sins with others. You don't have to tell anyone. There's no confession in Islam. There's no confession to a priest or to a sayyid or to a alim or to parents or to friends. There's only confession to Allah Azza wa Jalla. Yes. Come and confess to Allah. Come clean. This is the month of Ramadan. Make use of this, this spiritual month. The doors of heaven are open. There's a hadith that says in the month of Ramadan, Allah forgives there's a certain number. I don't know what the number is. The hadith says so and so number every night in Ramadan. Allah forgives. If it's Laylatul Qadr, that number is multiplied. If yes. it's Laylatul Eid, that, that number is multiplied by I don't know how many numbers. Yes. Wow. Rasulullah says that you have to be very evil, very wicked for Allah not to forgive you during the month of Ramadan. Otherwise, Allah forgives everyone. Take this opportunity. Yes. Allah is, is all forgiving no matter what you've done. What you've done in your past, past relationships, you've stolen, you've uh, done drugs, you've listened to me, whatever it is, there's nothing that should stop you from seeking forgiveness. Mm -hmm. For this, Allah, if a person really comes clean, Allah will erase, erase that background. Mm -hmm. There's a hadith, that says Allah Azawajal enjoys listening to the crying and to the whispers and to the chanting of a person who's repenting to Allah. Mm -hmm. Allah enjoys that. Allah enjoys seeing a young man come and repent to him and seek forgiveness. So the door is always there. No one should ever think that the door of Tawbah is closed. He's done something evil and there's no point of return. No, there's no such thing as no... as. Uh, there's a point of no return. No, there's always a return to Allah. Mm -hmm. You talked about confession, uh, co confession, sorry, and there's no need for confession within Islam. Uh, but Imam Ali Nabi Talib and the Ahl al-Bayt, especially Prophet Muhammad Ali, uh, they have a narration. Uh, it's a long narration. Uh, but basically, they just say that if you hurt someone, you have to go and seek forgiveness from that person. That's another story. That's another story. Yes. But the thing is, is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala states in the Holy Quran, whoever kills one person or spreads evil upon the earth, it's as like he has killed the whole of human, uh, all, all humanity. Right. So isn't that... That's right. That's for a person. That's the, the ugliness of the act. His act is that ugly. Mm -hmm. If you kill one person, it's as if you've killed everyone. Mm -hmm. But it doesn't say that if you come and seek forgiveness sincerely, 
Allah will not forgive. Yes. Allah will not forgive. Mm -hmm. There were people in Islam uh, um, prior, prior to their conversion to Islam, they mm -hmm. killed Khalid ibn al-Walid. Khalid, Khalid ibn al-Walid killed many Muslims, lots of Muslims in the Battle of Uhud. Yet he came and he became a Muslim and Rasulullah forgave him. It said, did Khalid ibn al-Walid actually seek forgiveness uh, or yeah, not? I don't know about that. But did Rasulullah accept his apology? Yes. Did he accept it as Islam? He accepted it as Islam. Mm -hmm. Because apparently he had repented. It said inwardly what was in his heart, that's another story. Mm -hmm. But apparently he had repented. Allah, Rasulullah accepted his, his repentance and he mm -hmm. allowed him to come into Islam. Yes. That's, it's an ugly act. But no matter how ugly the act is, if you mm -hmm. come and repent, if you're sincere, Allah forgives. Mm -hmm. uh, one time someone... Uh, Imam Ali ibn Talib heard, overheard someone saying Astaghfirullah and Imam Ali ibn Talib says uh, may your mother mourn over you do you know what istighfar is is uh, verily istighfar is degree of uh, the people of high, alliyin. Alliyin, high people high eye ranking people and uh, he says the word istighfar has three things sorry six things remorse over the past resolution not to return to not to return to the act ever seeking the forgiveness of others who you've wronged fulfilling every duty that you have neglected removing the flesh that was unlawfully nourished make your body taste the pain of, of obedience the same way you made it taste the act of committing sins number five it says removing the flesh that was unlawfully nourished now this is re this raises the question is that what does this mean and who does Allah forgive and are there conditions for Allah's forgiveness we've seen a couple of conditions right here uh, but is, is isn't this too harsh this is this is actually what we're you know we're, what we're planning on talking about this is Tawbat al nasuha mm -hmm. this is Tawbat al nasuha the Quran says Ya ayyuhal ladheena amanu tubu ila Allahi tawbatan Nasuha. Mm -hmm. Tawbah and Nasuha, uh, a, a part of it is sincere, a sincere repentance. Sincere repentance meaning that you don't say it out of fear or, uh, you know, when you secretly plan on going back to that sin, mm -hmm. you listen to music, but every time you get out of the car, you say Astaghfirullah, but knowing that in a, in a couple of minutes you're going to get into the car again. And listen to music. This is not Tawbah al Nasuha. Mm -hmm. Tawbah al Nasuha is sincere. It's sincere. Uh, it's remorseful. Showing remorse. Uh, you really, you know, regret doing what you did. Imam Zain Abdin Ali Salam says in his Munajat, Ilahi or Allahumma, in kana nadamu ala al dhambi. That if regret is considered repentance, that I am, I, I am among those that regret. I'm remorseful. I regret what I've done. Tawbah uh, nasuha is determination to not go back. You decide, خلاص, this is it. This is it. just like a person that quits uh, smoking cigarettes. Says, mm -hmm. this is it. That's it. I'm done. Okay. You're done with cigarettes? Now come to sins. Say I'm done with ghibah. Yes. Say I'm done with uh, listening to music. Say mm -hmm. I'm done with this, with that, with that. This is Tawbah al -Nusuha. Imam Ali alayhi salam in the hadith that you mentioned, he explains what Tawbah al is. Number one, an nadamu ala ma mada. an ala To be remorseful for what you've done. Second, العزم على ترك العود إليه أبدا. To be determined, العزم to be determined not to go back. Are these conditions, or is he explaining what sincere no, no. repentance? No, no. These is? are not conditions. These not conditions. No, we'll get to the conditions. Ah, inshallah. Yes, we'll get to. Con okay. This is what توبة النصوحة is. توبة mm -hmm. النصوحة, as explained by Rasulullah صلى الله عليه وسلم, he was yes. asked, "What mm -hmm. is توبة النصوحة?" He said, "أن يتوب التائب." ثم لا يرجع في ذنب كما لا يعود اللبن إلى الضر. When a person 
repents from a sin and decides never to go back. Mm -hmm. The same way that milk does not go back into the breast. Yes. Can milk go back into the breast? Definitely. This not. person will never go back to the sin. This is Tawbah Tan Wow. Imam Ali goes further. Goes further. Mm -hmm. Three, and to add ila al haquqahum. Yes. Part of repentance is that if you've hurt someone, you've stolen, you've stolen money, you've raped, you've killed, you go to that person and you seek Their forgiveness. forgiveness. Especially backbiting. Backbiting, anything that you've hurt others, Allah will say, I'll forgive you. Mm -hmm. They have to forgive you first. I forgive as long as they forgive. If they forgive you, I don't have a problem. Mm -hmm. nas. What if you're sincere uh, to your forgiveness to, to those people, yet they don't accept your, uh, your apology? Would Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept your apology? When they don't accept your apology, is it logical or is it not logical? Are they being stubborn? Or have you hurt them a lot that your apology is not enough? Mm -hmm. Sometimes apology is not enough. You take gifts, you take money, you take people with you, mm -hmm. show your remorse. What if you've done all of that? If you've done all of that and they're being stubborn, that's another story. Allah then they, they are encouraged. They are encouraged to forgive as well. In Islam, we are encouraged to forgive those who do bad to us. Fa'fu wasfahu, ala tuhabbuna an yaghfar Allahu lakum? Yes, yaghfar lakum aw yaghfu ankum. Forgive and forget. Don't you want Allah to forgive you? So why don't you be forgiving to others? Number four, and ta'amida ila kulli faridatin dayyata fadu'addi haqqaha. Any religious obligation that you haven't done, you have to do. Yes. So seeking forgiveness is not enough while you didn't fast for the past 10 years and now you want to seek forgiveness. Dayyib. Seek forgiveness and Allah will forgive you but go back and do the missed fasting, mm -hmm. the missed prayers, and the yes. hajj, and the khums that you haven't done. Five, and ta'amid ila lahm alladhi nabata ala suht fatudhibuhu bil ahzan. This flesh that was built upon haram food and haram means of living. Your means of living, where did it come from? What's your business? How are you making your wealth? Is it from haram? And the food that you ate was from haram? And the flesh that you built is all built upon haram means of sustenance? Mm -hmm. Make it, make it what? Disappear. This flesh of yours, the weight that you gained from haram food mm -hmm. and haram sustenance and haram means of li living, you take riba, you take interest, mm -hmm. you own a liquor store, you own a restaurant that sells alcohol and liquor. This is all unlawful, unlawful business. You work at a, you work for the government and you take money, you take unlawful money, you take bribes. This is all unlawful means. Mm -hmm, yes. And you lived on these means. Mm -hmm. Go and lose that weight. This is, this is istighfar. This, this is, is istighfar. Tawbah. We, I can understand that. But the thing is, is that some people might not have, you know, all of the food that they've eaten is haram. True. But no, no, they've no. eaten some. Imam Ali is not saying this is wajib. This is, he's mm -hmm. not saying this is wajib. But this is tawbat al nasuha Tawbat al nasuha One more. Yes. One more. وَأَن تُذِيقَ الْجِسْمَ أَلَمَ الطَّاعَةَ كَمَا أَدَقْتُ وَحَلَاوَةَ الْمَعْصِيَةَ The same way you let your body enjoy listening to music and eating haram food and going dancing and mixing and going to clubs and eating whatever you want and watching whatever you want and saying whatever you want. Now let it taste the pain of worship, of fasting, of prayer in the middle of the night, of, of being tired, of going for ziyara, of going to hajj. Let your body, the, the same body that enjoyed haram, now let it feel the pain mm -hmm. of, what is, of what is haram and what is wajib. Mm -hmm. ثُمَّ عَنْدَ ذَلِكَ تَقُولَ أَسْتَغْفُرُ اللَّهِ And he says, after then, all of these six steps, say. and then say astaghfirullah. Wow. Don't jump and say astaghfirullah. Right this away. is tawbah al nasuha Okay, uh, if we can, inshallah, I would like to elaborate more on this, uh, but after this short break. So respected viewers, uh, do stay tuned with us after the break. Uh, you are now going to be presented with live footages from inside the Holy Shrine of Imam al Hussein alayhi salam. Uh, so to that break, stay tuned. Salam ala ali Taha wa Yasi. Salam ala ali Taha wa Yasi. Salam ala ali Khair al Nabi. Salam ala Salam ala. Salam ala 
Respected viewers, welcome back. Hope you, inshallah, uh, enjoyed, uh, enjoyed, sorry, I don't know what's wrong with me today, uh, but enjoyed those live footages uh, from inside the Holy Shrine of Muhammad Hussain alayhi salam. Uh, but back to the discussion with my dear guest and esteemed guest, Sayyid Hussain Qazwini. Welcome back. How you say Thank you very much. Uh, for the dear viewers who are just tuning in, before the break, we talked about uh, the aspect of re uh, repentance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we got into the narration of Muhammad ibn Talib regarding sincere repentance uh, to Allah. Sayyidina, uh, before the break, uh, you were mentioning uh, the narration by Imam, Imam Ali ibn Abi Talib, and you stated some, you know, very extreme types of repentance or, or ways that a person should repent to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, such as removing the flesh. Uh, you know, is going to the gym enough? Or, <laughs> or does it have to be spiritual as well? No. This is... Um this is a way of saying, let him fast. Let mm -hmm. him fast. Because fasting is one way of repenting to Allah. Not eating, not drinking, abstaining from eating and drinking. Especially from that which is haram. Especially if a person who uh, would eat haram food. Or not necessarily eat pork. But his means of living was haram. Yes. Mm -hmm. He was working for the government. He had a specific position and he was taking bribes. Mm -hmm. So his means of living was all haram. That means, you know, all the groceries that he was buying. Definitely. That, that was all haram. His whole means of living was built on haram sustenance. He's encouraged to fast. Mm -hmm. Abstain from eating and drinking. This is, this is one way of seeking forgiveness. There's various levels. Mm -hmm. Imam Ali salam said, so the extreme level so if you want to get high to level, level let's not call it extreme but high level mm -hmm. high level of seeking forgiveness mm -hmm. because you know there's there's one sin and there's another sin yeah there's one sin that doesn't require all of this but if a person wants to transform his life Imam Ali Ali salam is speaking about those that want a complete transformation a person who was a gang member who would eat haram mm -hmm. his means of living he would steal, he would, bad, he would backbite, he would listen to music, he would do this, haram relationships, do this, do that. Now mm -hmm. this person wants to transform himself. Yes. These steps are for a person that wants to transform himself. Mm -hmm. So now that we have, you know, came to the conclusion that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is all merciful, all forgiving, 
um, we said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, whatever sin that you have committed in your life, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will definitely, yes. definitely forgive it. Yes. However, in chapter 66, verse 8, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, turn in repentance to Allah with sincere repentance. You just mentioned that. But the second part, it says, Perhaps your Lord will remove your evil from you and forgive you. Mm. The word perhaps. So it's not 100%. No. Perhaps. Uh, Does that depend on sincereness? It depends on the sincere. It depends on the sincereness. It depends on the conditions of the Tawbah. Has this person fulfilled the conditions of toba or not mm -hmm. it depends on that person but if the person has fulfilled the conditions of toba and comes out sincere and mm -hmm. clean and the other person forgives him as well the vic his victims have forgiven him Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Allah is all forgiving mm -hmm. speaking of conditions and terms um, what are the conditions of someone or seeking repentance from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah Azza wa Jal says in the Quran mm -hmm. <clears throat> that those who sin out of ignorance, mm -hmm. uh, forgetfulness, clumsiness, and then they repent, Allah will forgive them. Mm -hmm. But if a person knows what he's doing, mm -hmm. out of knowledge, no one's forcing him, he hasn't forgotten. He isn't in extreme conditions and he commits a sin, Allah will not forgive him. Never? See? Unless he says. Ennama tawbatu ala Allah lilladheena ya'maluna su'a bi jahalatin thumma yatubun. Those who commit a sin out of ignorance, out of uh, forgetfulness, out of clumsiness, mm -hmm. there's a difference between a person, you know, that knows something is haram, or is someone who, at the spur of the moment, out of forgetfulness, he's being clumsy, you know, a minute of forgetfulness. He forgot Allah, and so there's these repercussions. The verse says, وَلَا تَكُنُوا كَالَّذِينَ نَسُوا اللَّهَ فَأَنْسَاهُمْ أَنْفُسَهُمْ Don't be like those who forgot Allah, so mm -hmm. He make them forget themselves. Mm -hmm. You forget, all of a sudden He committed sin. Mm -hmm. But we do have verses within the Holy Quran. I mean, uh, we talked about intercession. Yes. And the aspects of intercession. That's another story. That's another story. Yes. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, even if you have committed the biggest sins, you know, but it doesn't say knowingly or unknowingly. Here it does. Well, what about the other verses? But what about the other verses? But what about the other verses? Jahalatin doesn't mean knowingly or unwillingly. Jahala, it means those who commit a sin clumsily. So they know, but they forgot? They forgot. They got taken in the, uh, you know, by spur the of the moment, by mm -hmm. desire. The, the desire overcame. But there's a different who, you know, he's, who sees everything, who knows everything. He didn't forget. He hasn't forgotten. But at the same time, he's sinning. But that, that, there's a big difference. Both are... I mean, they're the same. You see someone is sitting in a, in a session and they're backbiting. This person says something, that person says something. He gets carried away. Haven't you seen people like get carried away? Get, but he knows it's, it's bad. He knows, but he forgot. It's a moment of forgetfulness. It's like someone drinking. He knows that drinking is bad. But he but got he, carried away. You what? This is what jahala means. Jahala doesn't mean knowingly. Mm -hmm. It means clumsily, out of forgetfulness, mm -hmm. out of ignorance, being carried away. طيب. بجهالة ثم يتوبون من قريب. That's another condition. Two is that they repent right away. They don't wait seventy years. They don't wait till the moment of death. ثم يتوبون من قريب. You do something bad, come home and seek forgiveness. You said something wrong, you listen to music, seek forgiveness right away. There's a hadith that says when a person commits a sin, for the first seven hours, Allah will tell angels, don't record it. Why? Because per perhaps... For the first time? Or anytime. Anytime. When a person commits a sin, Allah tells angels, do not record it for the first seven hours. 
Why? Because perhaps they'll uh -huh. seek forgiveness. After seven hours, Allah will say, record it. Now record it. Really? Yes. Wow. مِنْ قَرِيبٍ فَأُولَاكَ يَتُوبُ اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِمْ وَكَانَ اللَّهُ عَلِيمًا حَكِيمًا These people, those who commit a sin out of ignorance, forgetfulness, clumsiness, and they repent quickly, Allah forgives. And then the verse tells us who will not be forgiven. وَلَيْسَتِ التَّوْبَةُ لِلَّذِينَ يَعْمَلُونَ السَّيَّآتِ حَتَّى إِذَا حَضَرَ أَحَدُهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ mm -hmm. A person who lives his life in vain, in committing sins, in committing adultery, in drinking, and he hurts this person, that person kills. Comm his whole life, he lives a sinful life, and then at the moment that he sees the angel of death, he says, إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ Like Pharaoh. Pharaoh, when did yeah. he seek forgiveness? When the moment drowning. that he saw that the water is about to collapse on him, he said, I believe in the God that Bani Israel accepted. Allah told him, no, it's too late. It's too late. Now that you're, you're about to die, حَتَّى إِذَا أَحَضَرَ حَدْهُمُ الْمَوْتِ قَالَ إِنِّي تُبْتُ الْآنِ No. وَلَا الَّذِينَ يُمُوتُونَ وَهُمْ كُفَّارٍ those who die and they're disbelievers, meaning they never sought forgiveness. Allah will not forgive them. Mm -hmm. They never came and repented to Allah. Mm -hmm. So this tells us that don't wait till the last minute. Yes. The message of this verse is don't wait till the last minute. You say, I have time. Mm -hmm. What's the point of uh, seeking forgiveness now? You know, there's people that say young people should not go to Hajj. Let them wait until they... Matured enough. No, until they're old. Old. Because in Hajj, Allah washes away your sins and you repent. Uh -huh. So why repent when you're young? Repent when you're old, when you're about to die. This is not genuine repentance. It's this not. is not true repentance. Not when you're about to die. You live a whole life of, of sinfulness. And when you're about to die, you seek forgiveness. Allah wants to see young people yes. to seek forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Those who are sincere when you wait till the end of your days, that's not a sincere repentance. Mm -hmm. um, some people state that, you know, we see very pious people, especially Maraje or, 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 you know, just regular people in society who are pious, who are righteous, who have good manners with others, but yet at the end of their life, say for like the last year or two, they get hit with a disease and they spend the rest of their life in this disease. I, I personally, I heard this um, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you know, placed them in this situation so, so He can wash away their sins. Is this true? No, that, no, no. Illnesses and, and sickness doesn't necessarily mean to wash away people's sins. It has various, various answers. This will require a, a whole, a whole uh, a program of a its own. Topic? Illness could be a test from Allah. It could be, you know, part of uh, human nature. Mm -hmm. Part of human nature is to become ill. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has created people and humans weak. They, he gave us this physical body and this physical body becomes ill. So it doesn't necessarily mean, yes, sometimes an illness could wash away sins, but it doesn't mean that that's always the case. Um, you know, a lot of righteous people became ill. Mm -hmm. What sins did they have to be washed away? Mm -hmm. Well, yes, you have something else? Yes. Okay. There's one thing th that I'd like to mention. The conditions for Tawbah. T for the Tawbah to be accepted. Mm -hmm. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in some verses has mentioned a condition for the repentance to be accepted. If this condition is not met, Allah will not accept the repentance. Mm -hmm. That condition is to fix oneself. You don't just say Astaghfirullah Rabbi wa Tabalih and that's it. Fix yourself. فَمَنْ تَابَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ظُلْمِهِ وَأَصْلَحْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهَ يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ غَفُورٌ رَحِيمٌ وَأَصْلَحْ He who reforms himself, he who fixes himself, he doesn't stay the way he is. وَإِذَا جَاءَكَ الَّذِينَ يُؤْمِنُونَ بِآيَاتِنَا فَقُلْ سَلَامٌ عَلَيْكُمْ كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَى نَفْسِهِ الرَّحْمَةِ الله what a beautiful verse. Very beautiful. كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِ الرَّحْمَةِ Allah made it binding upon Himself to be merciful. Wow. So beautiful. So beautiful. كَتَبَ رَبُّكُمْ عَلَىٰ نَفْسِ الرَّحْمَةِ That He's made it, he's made it mandatory upon Himself 
to be all merciful and to be all forgiving. Annahu man amila min kum su'an bi jahalatin. Again, those who commit a sin out of ignorance, out of forgetfulness, out of clumsiness. Thumma taba min ba'dihi wa aslah. And then he repents and he reforms and he fixes himself and he improves himself. He works on himself. Yes. He doesn't remain being the way he does. He says, my, my life has to be changed. I can't continue doing what I'm doing. My routine, my, my pattern in life has to be changed. Allah says, that's fine. You know, it's like, a, it's like an abusive husband. Mm -hmm. He beats his wife and then comes and says to his wife, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. He, he grabs her hand and he kisses her. Please, please. She says, fine, fine. But are you going to change? Yeah. Are, you, are you going to keep on being abusive? You're still going to be abusive. Whether physically abusive or verbally abusive. If you change, yes. But if you don't change, I will not accept your apology. Definitely, yeah. Allah says the same. ثُمَّ تَعْبِ مِنْ بَعْدِهِ وَأَصْلَحْ فَمَنْ تَعْبَ مِنْ بَعْدِ ظُلْمِهِ وَأَصْلَحْ فَإِنَّ اللَّهِ يَتُوبُ عَلَيْهِ He who seeks forgiveness and repents, yet reforms himself, yes, fixes himself, definitely. Allah will accept his repentance. Mm -hmm. And that's actually very nice to, to, to hear because some people, you know, they might think uh, that just saying Astaghfirullah is enough, yet their actions stay the same. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says otherwise, you have to be sincere uh, in your forgiveness. Uh, but now I would like to talk about the reward or the results mm. of forgiveness and tawbah. Uh, some people say, you know, we have an enriching by Imam Ali bin Talib in uh, Nahj al-Balagha, I believe, uh, where he says that prepare yourself for a day that there will not be any repentance. So the, the meaning, it means repent in this life before you go into the next life. It'll be too late. Uh, it'll, it'll be too late. And he mentions some of the results of, of tawbah and the reward of tawbah. If you can mention, yes. that'd be great. The Quran, the Quran tells us beautiful results of tawbah. Mm -hmm. uh, How many? Sorry. S several results. Several. Yes, I said beautiful results. Ah, beautiful results. For example, uh, Prophet Hud tells his tribe, uh, Thamud, I believe, mm -hmm. either Ad or Th Thamud. Mm -hmm. He says, mm -hmm. He says, mm -hmm. ثُمَّ تُوبُوا إِلَيْهِ يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيَزِدْكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ He tells his, his tribe, my people, seek forgiveness and repent to Allah. Allah will bring down rain. Meaning he will, he will change. He will change your atmosphere. There's a lot of people, you know, sins, sins sometimes have individual repercussions. Sometimes they have social repercussions. Mm -hmm. so a person commits a sin or keeps on sinning, Allah punishes him directly. Mm -hmm. He takes away a family member, you don't get a job, you get in a car accident, illness, so on. So sometimes when a group of people or a community or a tribe sin, there is a, a communal punishment. Yes. There's a drought. Drought. No rain. Mm -hmm. Allah says, seek forgiveness and repent there'll be rain. Mm -hmm. If there's rain, that's why rain is mercy. If there's rain, there's, uh, there's vegetables, there's yes. fruits. Yes. It's nourishment for there's trees, sustenance. for animals. It's, it's sustenance. It's, it's, it's a way there of is. life. Your, your animals will benefit. You will benefit. يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا وَيُزِدْكُمْ قُوَّةً إِلَىٰ قُوَّتِكُمْ And he will add power to your power. He will make you powerful. Mm -hmm. Seeking repentance will make, a, will make people powerful. How? By making a tie with the all-powerful. When you connect to the all-powerful, can you become weak? Yes. No, because your source of power is, is coming from the all-powerful. In uh, Nuh, السلام, he tells his people, فَقُلْتُ اسْتَغْفِرُوا رَبَّكُمْ إِنَّهُ كَانَ غَفَّارًا يُرْسِلِ السَّمَاءَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِدْرَارًا This is again, this is another verse. There is a connection between seeking forgiveness and repenting and rain. That means that when our sins increase, there's droughts. People that seek forgiveness, they'll have rain. And rain, you know, 
rain by itself is not something, you know, it's not a big deal. Sometimes rain can create floods. No, rain is a symbol of Allah's mercy and a symbol of rizq. It's a symbol of sustenance. Meaning, repent, Allah will send you your rizq, mm -hmm. your sustenance. Yes, I mean, you're out of job, Allah will improve. Allah will improve your economy. I would say today that maybe in some countries they don't need rain, but they need, to, they need their economy to be improved. Yes. Allah will improve their economy. Yes. يرسل السماء عليكم مدر ويمددكم بأموال وبنين. He will give you wealth and he will give you children. This is one of the benefits and rewards of seeking forgiveness. Wealth. You're not doing so well, seek forgiveness. Yes. Economically, financially, you're not doing well, seek forgiveness. You don't have children. Some people, Allah will punish them by not giving children. Seek forgiveness. Or, maybe it's not a punishment, it's a test. It's a yes, test. Sometimes a test. You want Allah to give you children? Repent to Allah. Say astaghfirullah. Say astaghfirullah. Seek forgiveness from Allah. Mm -hmm. He will give you paradises and gardens. And He will grant you rivers and paradise. Mm -hmm. These are some of the rewards and results of repentance. That's actually very beautiful because I would like this, uh, I think we have one or two minutes left, uh, but this relates to the story uh, during the life of uh, Prophet Moses peace be upon him, where the whole nation repented to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but yet there was one person who didn't repent, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, uh, for just that one person, didn't release the sustenance over them. So, Namam, uh, Namam, troublemaker. Troublemaker. But, is Allah, but then he sought forgiveness. And then Allah. he sought forgiveness, yes, yes, because he was the one that, you know what I mean? But isn't Allah all merciful? Why did he punish a whole nation just because one person? Because some crimes are very heinous. Some crimes, some sins, it's done by an individual, but everyone is, is remaining silent about it. Uh -huh. So they are equally guilty. Yes. When you see a crime taking place, speak. Speak out. Stop him. It's like seeing you're, in a, you're on a ship and someone takes an axe or a hammer and wants to break the ship. Is everyone going to remain silent? No. No, because everyone's gonna, is going to go. If people remain silent, the whole ship is going to go down and how many people are going to drown? The whole ship. Just the person that... No. Broke, no, they're all going to drown. It's the same thing with sins. Some sins are like that axe, like the hammer that take down the ship that makes the entire ship drown. Mm -hmm. People have to speak. This is, that, that's why we have the role of Al-Amr bil Ma'ruf and Nahi Al-Munkar. You see evil, say something. Do not remain silent. Speak out. Otherwise, you'll be equally guilty. That's a beautiful example you provided with the ship. I would like to thank you for joining us tonight, Sayyidina. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, accept your forgiveness. If, 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 if you have any sins. I have uh, many sins. Allah khalikum, inshaAllah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and uh, you know, bestow his sustenance over Allah you, if you will. Respective viewers, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept our uh, repentance. And uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive everyone, especially uh, as I mention every episode, it's an opportunity to take uh, the advantage of, you know, sending your salutations to our Master, Imam Hussain alayhi salam, during the live coverage. Uh, so stay tuned for the upcoming episodes. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Assalamu alaikum Sayyidina. Wa alaikum assalam. Allahumma ja'al mahya ya mahya mahya وَمَمَاتِي 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 مَمَاتَ مُحَمَّدٍ